All right, so let's just jump right into the card review here, huh? So people that are used to my full set card reviews, you know that I generally don't look at every card in the set because normal constructed magic sets have a ton of cards that are intended for draft or commander or other things that just aren't gonna be relevant to the mostly 60 card formats that I play. That being said, the alchemy card drops only 30 cards. So we're gonna go ahead and take a peek at all of them because I think most of them have potential to see play somewhere between Historic and Alchemy on Magic Arena. One thing I would just like to mention up front, because I always get comments asking about this, is Jeff, what are your thoughts or feelings on the fact that most of these cards are mythics and rares in the Alchemy drop? And to be blunt, uh, it sucks that they're all mythic and rares, but it's always sucked that most of Magic's constructed staples are mythic and rares. This is, again, not a problem that's unique to Alchemy. It is a problem with Magic as a whole that's definitely pulled to the forefront and highlighted in Alchemy, but I don't really knock Alchemy or this card release for that because it's a problem inherent to Magic, not to just these cards. Now, without further ado, let's dive in. Someone in chat saying this card is nuts, and yeah, it's real good. So there are three different cards like this. There are four mana cards that cost two less based on what types of cards are in your hand. So this is a two mana two three, if you have no lands in your hand, that gets any basic land onto your bat the battlefield tapped. And yeah, someone in chat calling, calling it out. This is absurd with the Zendikar modal double face lands because those Zendikar modal lands aren't lands inside of your hand. So building a deck with this and having like, you know, half of your lands be modal double face lands. So this is going to consistently be a two mana, two, three ramp spell for you. Sounds incredibly powerful. This is definitely a card that's going to be worth watching and building around, I think, because the upside is just so incredibly high. Up next in this three card cycle, we have the Moth Rider Calvary, which says other creatures you control get one one and it's flying. So if you have no other creatures in hand or if the other creatures in your hand are the same as this one. So this is going to be a sick tokens enabler. So you can easily build various tokens decks inside of Alchemy where this will be the only creature in your 75 and you'll be able to uh, just always have this as a two mana two two flyer. This this one will be even easier to enable than the green one where you kind of got to jump through some hoops with the Zendikar land. Like it's not difficult to build your deck to always have this be a be a two drop. And I I really like these digital designs in general because they're cards that you can choose to have them be a little bit high variance with your deck building decisions, but you can also choose to make deck building decisions in a way that's going to make them incredibly consistent. And up next, we have what was my spoiler card here in Cyber Siphoner that rounds out this three card cycle. So this card is two less to cast if there's no instants or sorceries in your hand. It picks an instant or sorcery from your graveyard back up to your hand. And then if it would die, it shuffles into your library instead. Yeah, I think this is the closest thing we're gonna get to Snapcaster Mage in Magic Arena anytime soon. And honestly, this is better than Snapcaster Mage in certain situations, right? Because if you have multiple of this card or if you have a way to bounce this back to your back to your hand, you're actually able to have this rebuy the same spell over and over and over again. And one thing that I really like about this card is you don't have to recast the spell you're picking up right away and this card is better in a more proactive deck, right? Like this explicitly isn't going to be good in a deck that wants to sit on a handful of counter spells because you need your hand to not have any instants or sorceries left in it for this card to be cheap and efficient. But, you know, pairing this with like a bunch of burn spells and proactive things like discard spells sounds potentially very good. All right. Up next, we have the Consuming Oni, 6-6 six, six, Flying Menace for 4. The beginning of your end step, a random non-land card in your hand perpetually gains. When you cast this spell, you lose 3 life. Really sick design. I would not be surprised to see this card have play in Historic. Um... 
The mono black aggro deck has been around the fringes of historic and this seems like a potential good top end for that. It also has potential inside of a death shadow, a death shadow shell in historic I think as well. You think removal is too good of historic? Maybe, yeah, it's, it's definitely true. The fact that this only has six points of toughness means that it dies to unholy heat might keep it from being playable, like having your four, and that's just, you know, that's a rant for another time, but I, you're, you might be right that as long as Unholy Heat is what it is in Historic, that this card's just not gonna be able to break out there. I also don't know that I'm gonna do a ton of brewing in Historic because of cards like Unholy Heat, it's very, very hostile to brewing because the format is what it is. Forgeborn Phoenix. Reconfigure means you can take turn this creature into an equipment and attach it to one of your creatures. Equipped creature has flying. Whenever Forge Born Phoenix or equipped creature dies, it perpetually gains. Whenever an equipped creature you control deals combat damage to a player, return this card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And remember, perpetual means forever. The card turns purple in text and is modified. So when your first thing dies and comes back, it's gonna keep dying and coming back as long as you have things with equipments to bring them back. So this this could potentially be what puts the kind of Nahiri Warriors equipment deck over the top in Alchemy. It's probably also worth exploring inside of a shell with like the Jeskai artifact style shell or red-white artifacts that we've poked at a little bit before, but this effect seems very powerful on the surface. Bellows Breath Ogre, starting intensity one. Intensity works exactly how you think it does when you read the card. So when this attacks, it deals damage equal to its intensity to any target, and then it perpetually increases its intensity by one. So it, uh, it, it attacks the first time, deals one to something, attacks the second time, deals two, three, etc. Um, I don't know if this is good enough. I guess it's an artifact, so maybe inside of the artifact aggro shell, it could be okay, but like, it's a tough sell on three drops that don't have an immediate impact on the board with the quality of removal even in alchemy, so wouldn't be surprised this one doesn't see play, but it might also just have enough synergy as an artifact creature that perhaps that puts it over the top. Better offer, put a random creature with mana value X or less from target opponent's library onto the battlefield under your control. It perpetually has power and toughness XX and perpetually gains ward one. So I, I think this card is a good example of good RNG in an interesting way. So while obviously this card has some variance by design, by giving you a random creature, you have some control over which random creatures you're pulling out of their deck by how much X you pay, and the fact that you're guaranteed to have a specific stat line and ward, regardless of which creature you get, also takes the floor on this card and increases it a good deal. So I wouldn't be surprised if this card is, is playable in something. The effect has a lot, of, a lot of high upside as far as the ceiling goes, and its floor is still pretty reasonable because you know at a baseline what you're guaranteed to get. Besage you Pathlighter. When it enters the battlefield, draft a card from the Pathfinder spellbook. Oh, there's a spellbook button here. Gosh. Gosh, Scryfall is great. Okay, so they're all lands. Wow, is this card good or is this card great? So it's a three mana, three two, that guarantees your next land drop. And most of the land drops that it's guaranteeing are good, are good utility here, right? Yeah, this card, this card's probably playable. I like, I like this one a lot. I like the design and it seems powerful. You probably, probably play that in something. Chronicler of Worship. When it enters a battlefield, put a random shrine card from amongst the top the top seven cards of your library into your hand. It perpetually gains this spell costs one less to cast, then shuffle. Um, okay, this is a cube card. I'm gonna go ahead and close the tab. Foundry Beetle. Equipped creature has first strike. 
the beginning of your upkeep, a random artifact in your hand get, perpetually gains. This spell costs one less to cast. Reconfigure. Uh, that might, this might be okay. You know, we talked about the artifact aggro deck. Like, 2-2 two, two, first strike for two is like close to a playable rate. And then you have two other miscellaneous upsides that you could have here. Again, just because context of formats matters, there's a good chance that if this effect isn't playable, the reason why it isn't playable is because Divine Purge exists for some reason. Like, Reconfigure should be a way for your creature deck to sidestep sweepers in a roundabout way by reconfiguring things on so that if they sweep the board, they fall off and you still have creatures in play. But the fact that Divine Purge is one of the more commonly played sweepers in Alchemy and Historic too is pretty offensive. And I really hope they kind of just like delete Divine Purge or make it unplayable with changes. Cause like, it's just so silly that it hits artifacts on top of hitting creatures with how powerful it is. Yeah, it just, it like takes stuff like this is like, this could be an interesting effect. And then Divine Purge is probably like, nah, it's, it's not, get rid of it. Fragment Reality. This is a card um, that's interesting. So Exile, a non-token artifact, creature, or enchantment. Its controller puts a random creature card with lesser mana value from their library onto the battlefield tapped. So, long time Hoaglandians are going to remember from Hex TCG the card Transmogrify. I need someone in chat just called this card Swords. This card is not Swords to Plowshares, chat. It's not even Path to Exile. This, this doesn't remove a threat. It downgrades a threat. And while in some instances, downgrading will be fine, in many instances, this is going to be much worse than an actual removal spell. So this will be a card that can buy you time. And in some instances, if you know the context of your opponent's deck, on smaller mana value creatures, this can actually be a removal spell, right? Like, let's say you're playing an open deck list tournament and you know that they don't have a one drop. This is just one mana exile target two drop, right? Or it's almost always one mana exile target one drop. So from that perspective, this card might be reasonable. Yes, it is notable that it can get rid of hate cards like artifacts or enchantments. So I could see this as a reasonable sideboard card in historic for combo decks, right? Being able to get rid of that graveyard hate and giving them a random creature you don't care about because you're going to combo kill them anyways, so... Could you do this to your own stuff? I mean, the fact that it explicitly gets something that, that's cheaper means that it's not really a particularly good combo enabler. It's much worse than things like Indomitable Creativity, for example. Futurist Spell Thief. When it enters the battlefield, conjure a duplicate of target spell in your hand. It perpetually gains... Enter your battlefield, conjure a duplicate target spell into your hand. Oh, it's off the stack. That card perpetually gains. You may spend mana as though, or mana of any color on that spell. This is a this is a neat design. Yeah, it gets it on the stack. The duplicate of target spell. I don't know about busted, but the the rate on it is pretty reasonable. And it's definitely a pretty unique effect. I like I like the design on this card. Whether or not it's playable will definitely depend on what the context of the format look format looks like, right? Like, do you do you want to? Are there decks in the format that have spells that you want to be casting? Yeah, definitely a sweet brawl card. This card is gas. Exile holographic double from your hand. Choose a creature card in your hand. Conjure a duplicate of it into your hand. So this is, this is just a clone effect, right? It's like clone a creature, only you get to cast it. And this, um, you know, for some reason, Luris is still legal in Historic. This, this card to conjure a copy 
conjure a copy of your Luris companion seems really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, seems seems useful. So I'm saying copy your Hullbreaker Horror? Nah, you don't want to play. Like, this card is good in decks where you can't play more copies of something like Luris as your companion or where you want more than four copies of a card in your deck. So as an extra piece in like a combo enabler, for example, there's definitely some good, like clone effects have consistently seen play over the years. And this is definitely a clone effect that looks potentially very playable. Imperial Blade Master, two, two, double strike. Whenever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone, draft a card from Imperial Blade Master Spellbook. So notable that this card has an okay stat line and you're gonna get to draft a card when you play it on three, assuming you had a samurai or warrior on one of the first two turns of the game. What are our, what are our cards here? So we've got some combat tricks, some equipment, the quality of the cards in the spell book here are only okay, but something that's notable about the cards in this spell book is that many of the cards in this spell book are additional samurai. So they kind of enable this as well. This is interesting with Mind Link Mech. That's a really good shout. So yeah, so if you if you use this to crew mind link mech, you'll have two of their static text, right? So you'll attack for eight in the air and then you'll get to draft two cards. And if you have extra mana available, drafting something like Adamant Will to give your double striker plus two plus two seems potentially very good. Yeah, I can see, can see this baby being sweet. Inch Blade Champion. Equipped creature gets one one. Whenever Inchblade Champion becomes attached to a creature, create a token that's a copy of Inchblade Champion, except it doesn't have this ability. Companion, whatever. Inchblade Companion Champion, whatever. Um, that's neat. I don't know if that's good. It's just like you can pay two mana to make a one one. Maybe, maybe that's okay in an aggro deck. It's just like an okay one drop that like scales later and gives you a mana dump. I feel like with all of like the utility lands and stuff we have that this maybe isn't good enough. Jukai Liberator, green ninja. When Jukai Liberator deals combat damage to a player, choose land or non-land, seek a permanent of the chosen kind. Okay. What uh, what playable green one drops are in the format? What what playable green one drops are in the format? There's the there's the pup. Oh, the new grazer is potentially good too. Miscellaneous death touchers. Yeah, this this card with. Decent green one drops could be could be reasonable. Like a three three on turn two is good, and then it just like draws a card of your or using every time you hit. Like this could this could put like green aggro has been on the very fringes of alchemy. This could put it back on the map for sure. Junkyard scrapper, a non-token artifact enters the battlefield under your control. Exile a random non-land artifact card with lesser mana value from your library. You may cast that card until the end of your next turn. A non-token artifact enters the battlefield under your control. Exile a random non-land artifact of lesser mana value from your library. Okay, so every time you play an artifact, you get to cast an additional artifact out of your library. And then potentially that one could also trigger this, right? So like if you if you have like if you have like six mana, you like play a three mana artifact, it gets you a two mana artifact, which gets you a one mana artifact. 
Oh, yeah, and it says until the end of your next turn, too. So you don't even you don't even need that much mana as well, right? So you're just like, on turn four, you play a three-mana artifact, get a two-drop, and then the next turn, that two-drop can get you a one-drop. Yeah, this this looks this this could be the enabler that puts uh the artifact deck really competitive into alchemy. This card this card's super sweet for this archetype. Really sweet card advantage engine. Kami of Morning. Whenever Kami of Morning enters the battlefield, target creature you control or creature in your graveyard perpetually gains. Whenever a creature you control with greater mana value dies, return this card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And again, this is uh, this is po really powerful because it's perpetual, right? So you target something, and then for the rest of the game, every time something dies, that thing bounces back into play. I this will be a card that seems sweet against uh, Meat Hook Massacre specifically. But again, something else worth calling out is that something that's incredibly awkward about this card is that, um, you know, there's both Farewell and Divine Purge as sweepers in the format. Yeah, I, I kind of expect based on the removal that exists in Standard slash Alchemy right now that, that this card's probably not playable. There's just there's too many Exile, exile things. Kami of Transmutation. When it enters or leaves the battlefield, choose one. Each permanent card in your hand perpetually becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. Each permanent card in your hand perpetually becomes an enchantment. Okay, chat, don't choose artifact because uh, if you choose artifact, every one of your lands is going to get exiled by Divine Purge. <laughs> Choosing enchantment. Could probably be sweet for the enchantment deck, but don't, don't, yeah, don't get your lands abraded, chat. Deals four to target creature, Planeswalker. If it deals excess damage, the next time you cast an instant sorcery spell, it deals, whoa! This card is so sweet. This card, this card is sweet. You get to deal deal the extra rollover yeah this card this card's really good for sure sweet sweet control card sweet sweet mid-range card yeah runaway growth starting intensity one whenever enchanted land becomes tap for mana its controller adds green equal to runaway growth intensity so this is this is too slow for alchemy but this is a gas a gas brawl card so by the time you're paying four mana, this is this is not good enough, but it's a neat, really, really neat design. Semblance Scanner. 3-1 three, for three. Whenever scanner or equip creature deals combat damage to a player, if it's not a token, conjure a duplicate of it in your hand. It's a neat design. Yeah, there's a there's a few goodies in here. This could this could be reasonable inside of the uh, inside of the artifact shelf for sure. It's a three one is a little bit awkward inside of removal spells and combat, but the uh, the one mana red deal one isn't super popular at the moment. So I think this could maybe be okay inside of inside of the artifact shell specifically. Soul servitude. Target player sacrifice a non-token creature. When they do, you may discard a card. If you do, conjure a duplicate of that creature in your hand. This is sweet. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I like this. This card's very good. It's a shame that it misses Planeswalkers, unlike Soul Shatter, but the fact that you can, like, turn a land into a threat seems, seems reasonable. It's also explicitly a non-token creature. So you're you're in a lot of situations you're gonna get something reasonable, but this one, this seems like a potentially playable piece of removal. Swarm Saboteur, two one Death Touch. When it deals combat damage to a player, conjure a card named Virus Beetle into your hand. Oh, huh, that's probably playable. So it's like roundabout when it hits your opponent they discard a card and it also gives you a, a like a scotch of board presence yeah that seems that seems fine under city plunder target opponent discards a card 
Then they may discard an additional card. If they don't conjure a duplicate of a random card from their library in your hand, it perpetually gains. Yeah, this card's really good. So they either they either get mind rotted for two mana, or they discard a card and you get a spell out of their deck. And notably, if their hand is empty, this is two mana, get a random card out of their deck. So the cards like this, mind rots that have text, even when your opponent's hand is empty, tend to be good. Yeah, it's could be a land shit. I didn't did I say spell, I didn't intend to say spell, but you are you are correct that this could be could get you. Yeah, it's it's guaranteed at worst draw a random card from their deck. This is this is probably playable. Modified creatures you control have menace. When it enters a battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, seek a card with mana value equal to that card's mana value. Neat. The modified archetype is one that feels close, and this could be a good one drop for that, giving them a little bit of evasion against other creature decks. Dragonfly Pilot. When it enters the battlefield, conjure a card named Dragonfly Suit into your hand. Dragonfly Pilot can crew as though it were too large. Let's dragonfly suit to. It's good. This could be okay. It's like a like an okay one drop for the vehicles deck. The vehicles deck has felt close in the past. I could see I could see this putting over the top. This card's not playable on its own, but when it's coming with a free pilot and a one drop, that could potentially be fine. Ward two for one. And crew as though it were too bigger. Discard two two cards. Draft a card from their spell book. There's some good ones in here. So while discarding two cards to get one isn't necessarily a great exchange rate in an aggressively slanted shell that's gonna have spare lands in the mid to late game, that could be okay. Another thing that's interesting to note about this is if there's bigger, um, what's it called, vehicles that you might want to crew with, this uh, could be an enabler for uh, the 4-3 that reanimates a vehicle, which is kind of sweet. So you could play this, discard, pay a pitch to vehicles for the rat. And this is a pilot, so you can play this splashing the blue off of the pilot land as well. It's not. So the spell books aren't guaranteed to be standard cards. So the, the crew, this one's from whatever this set was. Kami of the Bamboo Grows. When it enters the battlefield, you may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. And then you can channel this to conjure two cards named Forest into your hand. So this is a really sweet design. So it's like a Boreal Grazer, only when you no longer have lands in your hand to ramp with it to put them into play it can then become lands so it's a grazer on one when grazer's at its best and it just makes lands for you later so it basically just doesn't have the downside that you're used to grazer having which is it's not going to be able to put lands into play late when you run out of lands yeah and this is a uh, kind of a cute enable. We talked about playable green one drops for the ninja earlier. This is a playable green one drop for that. Painful bond. This card is cracked, chat. I I'm, I tend to shy away from making strong statements. This card is very, 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 very good. Like, draw two cards for two mana at instant speed is is a good rate, like, what's it called? Is it S N Whispers of the Night? Sign, Sign in Blood is the, whatever, the comparable one, right? Like, this is a sorcery, it draws two, and it's guaranteed lose two. This one is your only... This one, you're probably not losing more than two, right? And if you're playing it in, like, a deck with, like, Luris, for example, like, Luris decks, um, red-black decks like that, like, this card is super powerful, and you can choose when you lose the life down the line. Yeah, and it's, and it's an instant speed, too. This card, this card is super, super good. So this is a good, this is a good historic card.